Arjun Singh, we see there. We don't need. Really. Oh, that are first Hindu, still in Hindu. To save Hindu and Sanatan Dharma from the clutches of Muslims at that time, Mughal, Aurangzeb and others, very aggressive. Or oh, he has a vow that if he will not defeat Mughals and they will have to beat India, then we will not shave our heads. We will not shave our ears. And they took some bob, bob in their hands. They wear. You should see. Oh, yes, that. That will be bring independence for Hindu and Vedic culture. So they are not any separate thing from or oh, devotees of India. They are Sanatanist. They also know that Krishna and Ram is Supreme Lord. Right? Guru Nanak used to tell all these things to his devotees everywhere. So they accept everywhere. Arjun lost his two sons because they promised we cannot accept oh, Muslim religious. And they were given in wall was wall was constructed. And the Mughals they put him in that wall. Wall became here. Oh, you will accept? Never. And clear. Now you will have to accept. Never. They came to hear. Oh, there is some time. Otherwise you will cover. But he still he never accepted. And he was given in war. So how sacrifice they have done for India? To say, oh, Sanatan Bhaji So we are also here in their guidance. And they should save us and give shelter. <laughs> so that we can preach Sanatan Dharma in the line of check. Guru Nanak. That Krishna and Ram is super. They are supreme the personality of God. By chanting and remembering. Supreme Lord, we can be happy. Otherwise, never. So this is the mission of our Sanatan Bhairi Dharma of Chait. See, Guru Nanak, Arjun Singh and his Guru Pari is still. And I know for all of you, uh, anything I can say will simply be repeating the obvious, which is why you're all here. The reason that he's come here clearly is to continue the great tradition, the Sampradaya and the teachings of our Sampradaya, Gaudiya Vaishnavism, which is to reach out to the world and spread the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which is love and affection for all living entities and to give all living entities irregardless of qualification or disqualification, the chance to attain prema or pure love of God. This is the highest goal of life, the greatest gift that can be given. And it's our great fortune and a great rarity that a personage such as our Srila Gurudev has come and to inspire us. Many of us were at one time uh, 
stuck in an ocean of melancholy. Many of us took initiation or inspiration from His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, my Guru Maharaj. He inaugurated the Hare Krishna movement. Now it's over 30 years ago, 33 years ago, 36 years ago. So it's been a very long time and a lot of us have been waiting for this opportunity. We've missed Swami Bhaktivedanta's association, wondering where is Krishna, is Krishna there for us? And Krishna has heard our prayers and sent his bosom friends, Srila Prabhupada's bosom friends, our dear Gurudev. And what more can I say than this, um, except that we hope that Gurudev continues to give us shelter at his lotus feet and continues to be patient with us. And I try to make the point to them that Krishna explained the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita millions and millions of years ago, eventually to Manu, the father of mankind, and that the science of the relationship between the individual and the Supreme ultimately really has nothing to do with Christian, Hindu, Muslim, or Jew, because everyone is a spirit soul and has an eternal relationship with God, and the basic principle is bhakti, or love and devotion like this. But one thing they accept, and all faith communities accept, that with time and due to the nature of institutions, the, the, the essence of religion can be lost or it can become corrupt. Uh, and unless a person who has two feet firmly situated in the spiritual world we have one person with two feet in the material world, perhaps looking in the right direction, often looking in the wrong direction. Maybe someone have, else has one foot in the material world and is taking some help and has one foot stepping into the spiritual world. But unless we have the guidance of someone whose both feet, lotus feet, are situated in the spiritual world and who can pull us up, it's very difficult to understand the true purport of the scriptures. And it may take many, many lives to get that association. So we feel very, very fortunate after many, many millions and millions of lives in useless existence in this material world, simply trying to survive and thrive and eat, sleep, mate, and defend. And somehow or other, by some unimaginable agyata sukriti, a good association, we come in the association of a pure devotee who's both Lotus feet are firmly situated in the spiritual world at all times and who kindly reaches down to us and pulls us up. So with all the humility that my command, I bow down to Lotus Feet, Shri Narayana, and all of the devotees in this assembly. Thank you. I, I cannot describe how amazed I am at his kindness and his compassion. So this, we can understand that this is a manifestation of the kindness and compassion of the Supreme Lord Himself, of Lord Krishna, Shrimati Radhika, and the combined form of Radha Krishna, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So our great fortune we cannot measure. And we see Gurudev traveling all over the world. I was just in Badger, LA, San Francisco. And just by his presence, the atmosphere of Vrindavan that he brings and the joy and the lightness. As soon as Gurudev comes with his devotees, then it is just ananda, just pleasure and just bliss. And without this, actually, there's no real value to life. From time to time, I come in contact with people all the time who are not having such association, and I feel so sorry for them. And coming from that situation, then I come into Gurudev's entourage, and it's like coming from darkness to light. More than darkness to light. It's just so pleasant, so pleasurable. And devotees, people they see, that oh, those who are with Shudrai Maharaj, that there's something different. There's something different in this group. But what it is, 
It is only Shula Gurudev. Uh, without Shula Gurudev, then we're nothing. And everything, all the bliss, all the happiness, all the um, special moves that are there, that they're only due to the mercy of Shri Gurudev and uh, Guru Parampara. I was saying the other day that somehow, just as one devotee, Matila Dishpagul, he was saying in um, Bajra, we were discussing, and he was saying how Shri Gurudev, he's the embodiment of all the Guru Parampara. That all the personalities in the Guru Parampara, that they're there within the body of Shri Gurudev. So, what can I say to glorify somebody as exalted and so merciful and kind as Shri Gurudev? So we're very, very fortunate to be here. And I pray that we somehow or other always be with Gurudev, if not physically, but at least by heart and get closer and closer and closer so that we can be specks of dust and love to speak of Shri Gurudev. Namo Mahabadanaya, Krishna Prima Pradayati, Krishna Yo Krishna Chaitan, Namne Gaudat Vise, Gurave Gauda Chandra Yara Dikaya Tadale, Krishna Yo Krishna Hatta, Tadavata Yanamo. <coughs> Yam prabrijan tamanu pe tama pe tukritem dvai pa yanu vidaka karya juha potre titan me teater vo vine du tam sarva vitari ganyam munima nutosu tavai vasmi tavai vasmi nagwami tayabina tibi kaira de tangnaima machana are passed by humble obeisances in the lotus feet by of my Paramaradhatam Gurudev Om Vishnu Bhāsis Nam Bhakti Pratyam Tisho Goswami And my Shikcha Guru Om Vishnu Bhāsis Nam Bhakti, Bhakti Vedam Swami Narayana All the Tid and the Bhagavan Vaishnava, Vaishnavika, and my dear mother, sisters, and all. As they told, we have come to remind you that you are part and parcel of Supreme Lord. We have forgotten him. He is most powerful. He can create in a second, in a moment, millions and millions of universes. And in the same time, in a second, he can demolish all. And again, millions of universes. He can create very beautiful, handsome, sweet, and very merciful. It's very funny for us, very well. That is why he sometimes descends from Golo Vrindavan with his all associates. And sometimes he sends his very powerful associate to remind us that you are all part and parcel of that Supreme Law and eternal servant. Without his mercy, you cannot realize your transcendental form. Never. And you cannot be happy. There is no way to be happy. This world is what? Full of misery. 
Hold up misery than very Nashwara. Very soon. Very soon we will be old. <coughs> and too old. And then we will have to give up this body. What we are collecting from this world. Money, position and everything. You cannot take even a single hair. You are not this body, physical body. Don't quarrel for this. Don't worry for this body. This is a bag of urine, stone, blood and so many things. Soul is there at all. And she has been captured by Maya in this body. You should always realize. Very soon, whether you want or not, you will have to give up this body. Only the bad actions and good actions that you have done, or it will go with you. And again you will have to come in rotation. But when you will surrender yourself in the Lord's feet of a very qualified, bona fide guru, Shad Guru, and if you will obey him and obey his instructions, then very soon you will realize, oh, we are in dream, what we are seeing, looking up here and there. We are, we are, we are in jail, and now they will see in a moment, what? They are in Guru Kanda. There is no birth and death, no endless pain of birth and death there, no old age, nothing there. Only serving of Supreme Lord and always sinking in the ocean of endless and deepless ocean of love and affection. So, our Rishis and Maharshis, they realized this fact millions of years before this day. Especially and Krishna and Ram, they came to this world and told Gita, Srimad Bhagavata, Ramayana, Vedas and Puran, all that <coughs> we are eternal servant of Krishna. He is a bit, he is embodiment of love and affection. Krishna especially. So, <coughs> you can realize by all these things by reading Sri Madhu Bhagavata. Vyas, he wrote, he divided Veda. He manifested so many Purans Mahabharata, Gita, so many Upanishads he discovered and manifested, but he was still no happy, not happy. Once Narada is good, or why you are looking worried? Well? You know everything that you have written, but still you are unhappy. He told that, my Guru Dev, I don't know. Please tell me why I am what. A disciple should surrender in the Lord's feet of Guru in such a way. Vyasi Narayan even. Yes, oh, that's this idea. And then Nara told him, that you are given preference of dharma, artha, kam, moksha and all these things. But we have not written the sweet pastimes of Krishna. 
that a Krishna can come to the Supreme Lord in a form of a very beautiful son. He goes door to door in the houses of all the gopis to still bear bread, butter, not butter, hot. We cannot be worried for him because we don't realize, but he realizes they are all my children. They are my part and portion. So he descends, we cannot go to him. Understand? We cannot go there. But he descends himself. We cannot call us earnestly, but he calls by come on, come on, all. Dance with me, sing with me, and be happy. This is Rash. Have you written all these things in what you have written? Mahabharata, Gita, or Puran? No, I don't know all these things. How he searched his father, Nand Baba and Jasuda? How he is controlled? Even being the Supreme Lord, he forgets that I am Supreme Lord. And her, his mother, what doing? Chastising. I will not let you come in my laps. I will not give you breath. Then what we will do? Be there far away from me. To whom he is doing? To Supreme Lord. He is. You know Shakhar? Subhal Siddha. Oh, that, they defeat Supreme Lord. Until that you should be my horse. And then become Krishna becomes horse like and they ride on there, his soldiers. And you should go on, go on, run away, run away. And sometimes if their mothers have given any very sweetest thing for familiar preparation, oh they took from their mouth and gave in the mouth of Krishna. How wonderful. So, have you written all these things? Yeah. Have you written that Krishna is telling that, oh gopis, I cannot repay you. In thousand and thousand and millions of years, I cannot. Please be merciful to me. Oh Supreme Lord, He is telling that I cannot repay your what your love and affection, that you left everything, your position, your dharma, sanatana dharma, chastity, or hmm? oh, the fear from their superiors. Yeah. For Krishna. Krishna cannot, he cannot give even one shakat bhakti then. He cannot give up his father, mother. He cannot give his queens of Dwarka. He cannot give up Arjun, him, Nakul. Even those who are chanting his names and taken his shelter, he cannot give up. But gopis, what we have? We have not all touched the button. That we think for Krishna. So Krishna came. Oh, I cannot do it. Have you read it? No. Then what you have written? Nothing. And that is why you are not Then how can I write all these things? Oh, being trans. And by my mercy. In your trans, in meditation you will see. Be surrendered there. And take help of bhakti yoga. Bhakti yoga means surrender. And thus he surrendered himself. And he saw in trance from birth of Krishna up to all the three past times of Dwarka India. Especially the three past times of in Gopur, Vrindavan and Vrishya. And this is called Samadhi Bhata, Srimad Bhata, Srimad Bhata. 
we by this thing shrimad bhagavat we can know that krishna is not our go achieve krishna but krishna prem is our go but also you should know who is the reservoir of that prem who oh, gopis among gopis chandravali and rat among them to that reservoir of that love and so our aim and object to attain that love and affection of krishna so prem is prayojan prayojan means oh, alternate of our bhajan or life, goal of life this love and if you can attain <coughs> even a glance of that love and affection even a many part then you can what to you can make make it endless portion of love and affection and whole generous with me down there and you will be happy krishna will be happy and thus your life will be happy. there is no way so <coughs> everywhere i am speaking of this from the sri chaitanya charitamrita adi lila three and fourth chapter and shrimad bhagavatam from brihad bhagavatam ritam that our aim of our life and devotion is to attain love and affection in the guidance of god the root of radhika we cannot attain even even krishna he was greedy for that but <coughs> we can attain something that is had been told told in anarpita charin chira to serve radhika in a manjari mood this is the highest goal of all devotion and love in our bhakti practice but how to attain then we will have come to down from adau sabda tata sadhu sabda bhajan kriya tato anarthan vritti tata bhajnistha ruchi ashakti and then bhav then we pralam bhav and then after that some go out three eight is stage which bhakti no thakur has or this explain in bhajan dash in eight chapters and these chapters are like this adar sabda morning of the our bhajan morning by pretty called nishant lila now nishant bhajan begins from shraddha second sadhu sang and anartha nirvritti at a time without sadhu sang who has so many unwanted things on earth it cannot go away so we are weak because god full of all kinds of honor but it may go only by the process of taking shelter in the lotus feet of sadhu but sadhu how if a sadhu can deviate then he is not good he never deviates because he is sadguru he is a light soul he has realized krishna he has realized he knows all the ethics teachings as a very expert he can remove all doubts he has no doubt himself then otherwise those who are in doubt what is soul super soul what is bhakti how we can be happy how can we shall oh those who have no realization even they have no ruchi taste Then they cannot achieve. 
they are bound to fall down. So this guru cannot help you because they, these kinds of guru are dilemma. You see and you are uh, expect you are experienced for these gurus. Really, if you want to attain that kind of love and affection in the guidance of gurus, you will have to take shelter in the lotus feet of any such rashik and bhav guru. And begin from Shraddha. We are told everywhere, what is Shraddha? Hmm. Shamrani can speak two words for that. What is Shraddha? That is, Shraddha is the firm faith that Krishna Bhakti Koila Sarva Karma Kritahoy. If I simply engage in Krishna Bhakti, all other subsidiary activities are taken care of. My maintenance, my happiness, everything else is achieved. How does Shraddha come? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu states, Ekupe Brahmanda Bhomite Konya Bhagyavanaji Guru Krishna Prashade Pai Bhukti Lata Beach. After many, many millions of births wandering in different universes, one who has performed many, many millions of births of Sukriti, spiritual pious activity of going to temples, serving sadhus, knowingly or unknowingly, observing holy days, reading or hearing spiritual shastras. After many, many births of this, one meets a bona fide self-realized guru and attains from him the seed of bhakti, the bhakti lata beach, that is shraddha, which is the root of all devotion, ultimately leading to praying. There are two kinds of shraddha, that is, lokik shraddha, or faith in mundane superiors, and transcendental shraddha, or faith in the words of guru, sadhu, and shastra. Lokik sh shraddha can also mean when one's faith in the words of guru, sadhu, and shastra are komal, weak, and shaky. And when that faith becomes strong, it becomes paramartic shraddha. Paramartic shraddha, or transcendental shraddha, is of two kinds. The first kind is called shastra, artha, um, avatarana mayi shraddha. That is, when one's faith is inspired by the words of shastra, that is, the instillment by Shastra that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. I am his eternal servant, his part and parcel, and having forgotten him, I'm suffering. So out of the sense of duty, I engage in faith, in service to the Lord. Or out of fear, Shastra also says, if you don't engage in the service of Krishna, then you'll go to hell and you'll be punished for your sinful activities. So in the beginning, there's also fear that arises from the words of Shastra. Awe and reverence and some fear in the beginning. The second kind of Shraddha, transcendental Shraddha, is called Bhagwat Lila Madhuri Loba Mayi Shraddha. That is faith in the words of Guru Sada and Sadhu and Shastra, which come by the great mercy of having the association 
of pure devotees, Rasika devotees, as Srila Gurudev just said. That is, those devotees who are tasting all mellow relationships with Krishna, those who are experiencing transcendental sentiments, and those who are tattvagya, that is, who's realized all tattvas, maya tattva, jiva tattva, bhagavad tattva, prem tattva, he's realized them all. And hearing the sweet pastimes of the Lord, one develops a loathe or a greed for following the inhabitants of Braja, who particularly are oceans of the moon, which is in my heart, which is in my swarup, which is in my constitutional position. And then under the guidance of that saintly sadhu, I gradually hear those pastimes, hear the qualities of the Lord, and advance in bhakti by that way. So this is some few words about Shreva. Thank you. Thank you. Well, but from where this sattha will come? Transcendental sattha. This is the question. Hmm? So, Bhakti Sat may speak to us. Omogyanati Marandasya Kinanjana Shalakaya Chak Suram Nidhikam Jena Tasman Sri Gurudev. Once in Melbourne, Australia, one devotee asked our Guru Maharaj, Nijalila Pavishta Om Vishnu Pad, Nisi Bhaktivedanta Sai Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, from where did we get the good fortune to get your association? We actually didn't know the Sanskrit word su kriti, good fortune, but he said it anyway like that. Prabhupada looked at him and said, You didn't have any, I brought it for you. In the Shastra it says, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastra Khoi, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Matra, Sarva Siddhi Hoi, Lava Matra, Sarva Siddhi Hoi. When something is necessary to be heard, it's repeated. So here we hear, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastra Khoi. This means all scriptures are shouting one thing, get the association. Uh, sa anga means with the limbs or the body of. Uh, get close to a sadhu. Who is a sadhu? What is a sadhu? That means one who can give us that which is sad, uh, eternal, the truth, the absolute truth. And he can give us the sadhan, the practice that we're going to need to get to that truth. And he's going to give us the sadhya, which is the goal of that practice. One poet is sung. If you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. So we see this sometimes in devotees because they don't have a clear or fixed conception of what is their goal in Krishna consciousness. Their, their practices are all over the map. They don't have any clear idea of how to do bhajan or how to do sadhana, practices of bhakti, with what goal or mood in mind. So these things are given by a real bona fide sadhu. And therefore, we want, without him, we cannot get the mercy of God. Once I asked Srila Gurudev, how is the mercy of God coming to us? As like the cat or the monkey in the Ramanuja Sampradaya. Do we hold on to Guru and he carries us there? Or does he pick us up like the mother cat picks up the kitten and he carries us there? He said, both are required. Just, he said, it is like the guru is throwing down the rope of his instructions to you who are stuck deep in a well and you can't get out. So you're going to have to grab hold of that rope, but he's also going to pull you out. So both are required. Some effort will be required on our part. Sometimes, in very rare cases, guru may also come down into that well and lift you out. Like sometimes somebody who never graduated from high school because for some reason he will get an honorary degree from Harvard. But will that happen to everyone? No, that is very, very rare. So we should not think, oh, I won't do anything and Guru will come and save me. We should also be merciful to Guru and make some efforts on our part. So 
we will talk this week about all these subject matters, and I thank Gurudev for calling on me and hope that he was satisfied. Hare Krishna. Thank you. So, in Shadu San, if we can know, without the help and surrounding in the Lord's feet of Sadhguru, we cannot attend the work. Thus, knowing this, he serves any Guru, one of five. But if he had not done so pretty that, oh, very hard, very rare. Koti Shwapi Mahamne and millions of millions of persons, very rare that can have a bona fide view. So, knowing this, he began to search. And if he had lot of Sukriti, then any Vaishnava will tell you, Oh, come with me. I will let you, I will help you and I will take you to Bona side. Oh, oh, he is my Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj. Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati. Oh, he is my Guru. Anyone took uh, Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj? Oh, by Charanar Prabhu. Oh, he was searching. And one day anyone took him to Siddha Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta. And then he saw, in a glance he was attracted to him. And he surrendered. So this is one thing. Yes. Then he takes a Harinam first. And he promises that I should not take four, uh, I will follow four reflective principles. And go their gifts, Harina. After serving him so many years, then he takes, he thinks the necessity of taking diksha, tibdekya. Then he takes, receive diksha. And thus his bhajan kriya begins. Serving him like bosom friends. And Having some uh, lines from Gurudev, he begins bhajan and gradually adopt goes. This is the line or way process to give up all the others. If a man is always in an earth, how he can develop his Krishna consciousness? So Bhakti Nur Thakur in the first of Yam, that is in first beginning, he is telling Parma Pamana Krishna, this is Bhajan Rahasya. If you want to know all these things, you can read Bhajan Rahasya and Jaiva Dharma. Jaiva Dharma is very important. We should try to distribute Jaiva Dharma to all devotees. Who are devotees or non devotees. By reading this Jaiva Dharma, anyone I think that this is most important. Before Bhajan Rasya, Jaya is needed. So I want that also or collect that Jaya and distribute that everywhere. So Bhakti Thakur is telling, explaining one slow of Bhakti Rasam Sindhu. Tang ne vyajam bhajapuri ne thim pāman pāmananam shadharajyan iti uttam shloka modim pruddhanam tah karna kuhare hant janna mubhano abhaso api chatayati maha pātri bhanta āsya. The name of Krishna, not name, very powerful. Very, very powerful. Even not pure name, even Namabhas, Glens, Glens, Asnam. If anyone doing, 
all kinds of maha patak patak pap and all sins they go away. So nam krishna or nam ilgi you pure krishna pain. But navabhaya smilna. Anath may go by chanting navabhaya. So he is blood pain. And he is only bhakti in Uthagur. For parama pamana krishna tahalcha. Krishna is what? Param pavitra. Supremely pure. By being sincere and surrendering under his lotus feet with a sraddha that we explain. You should do bhajan, practice of bhakti yoga. Oh, the name of powerful Krishna is so powerful that even the namabhas he can take a take away all kinds of Mahasheen, Mahapap, Sheen and all other things. All kinds of anas. You should have a strong belief in this and charm. There is a book written by Sikh Shastras by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. There are eight days slow. And very, very important. This is the essence of all the Vedas, Upanishad, and even Srimad Bhagavata. In this Sikh Shastra, first is Cheto Darpanamat Janam Bhav Mahatha Bhagavata. Sreya Kairava Chandrika Bhagavata. Second day slok, Nam Nam Akari Bhautha Amitya Sarvasha. Oh, Krishna is himself name. More, he has manifested his all powers, mercy in these names. But we have no belief. <laughs>
Ambil dari dekat Dan hari Oh, dan Oh, dan